Hey, paisanos! Because of the recent Mario movie, the time seems ripe to review the old Mario Brothers cartoon from the 80s. Anywho, see you after the title card. Otter, hit the switch! Anywho, let's start with the usual technicals. The Super Mario Bros. Super Show is an American live-action animated television series that aired from September 4th to December 1st, 1989, and was made by our good old buddies over at Deck. The series was based off the video games Super Mario Bros. and Super Mario Bros. 2. And yes, I know the American Mario Bros. 2 was a reskin of a different game and we never got the real one. You can delete your comment now. The Super Mario Bros. cartoon is the first of three television series to be based on the Super Mario Bros video game series. There was also a Zelda cartoon segment that aired instead of Mario every Friday, but we are talking about Mario today. Zelda is for another day. Moving on. This is where I normally go over the characters, but it's Mario and crew. You know them already. Peach and Bowser called Princess Toadstool and King Koopa for some reason? Mostly because that's what they were called here in America before the Super NES games, where they were changed to match the Japanese games, but that is neither here nor there. On to the series. After that now legendary opening song, you know the one, we start every episode with a live action segment where the brothers meet either a celebrity, a movie character, or a parody of a celebrity or movie character, and help them with a small problem that reminds them of something that happened in the Mushroom Kingdom. And this leads us into the cartoon we are actually here to watch. And then in the wrap-up segment, we cut back to the live action bits where Mario and Luigi solve the problem from the opening bit and end the episode. Let's start this deep dive with the live action bits because we'll be skipping them during the segment where I go over a few episodes. Anywho, the word to describe them is corny with a twist of cringe and a hint of oak. And I say that because either you need to be drunk or so sleep deprived that you might as well be drunk in order to find any of it funny. But at the end of the day, these segments are harmless. Or at least I could say that if not for something the producers did during the syndication run. Anyone who has followed my good friend and collab partner during my Thunder review, Rowdy C from TV Trash long enough, will remember that to try to get a new audience, they edit out the live action segments and replace them with something else. Yep, I'm talking about the Club Mario segments, a brain-dead idea so stupid that they never re-aired it after it failed to draw in new viewers, have been left off every VHS and DVD of the series, and has never hit streaming, where these brain-dead teens in their 20s named Tommy and Com MC act like stoners so have hit the hooch way too hard. If I was a kid seeing this in reruns, I would feel insulted and talked down to. It's the TV personification of an okay boomer moment. If I could quote one angry video game nerd for a moment, what were they thinking? Anywho, moving on, we start each animated segment with the second verse of the legendary theme song that no one remembers to eat up time for the sake of padding. Uh... Huh. Been a while since I used that one. Anywho, the gist of the formula they use is that they are where they are for one of two reasons. Either to get a one-off MacGuffin to end King Koopa's tyranny once and for all, or are there to stop Koopa from doing a thing, with it deviating from this very rarely. After this, a parody of some kind would happen. Yes, that's right, the Super Mario Bros. cartoon is chock full of parodies and spoofs. Either a movie genre, a specific movie, or a parody of a celebrity. Some of the more notable ones are the Frankenstein episode, the Indiana Jones parody, Indiana Joe, or the King Arthur mythology episode. And now for the animation quality. It is constantly jumping from passable 80s Saturday morning to 60s Hanna-Barbera. You know what? Skip that. The animation is bad when you take into all the coloration and layering errors into account. Like, seriously. If you want a drinking game that will get you pissed drunk really fast, marathon this and take a shot every time you say layering or coloring error. I understand that this was TV grade cell animation and errors had to just be sent through because fixing it would involve redoing the whole scene, but the sheer number of them in this cartoon is distracting. This had to be a real rush job. That is the only acceptable justification for all of this. Anywho, let's go over an episode just for the hell of it. Let's start with the King Arthur spoof episode, King Mario of Cramelot. We start our episode with Mario, Luigi, the Princess, and Toad going through the Kingdom of Cramelot. Yes, really, the parody names really are that on the nose and stupid. Anywho, they are looking for the Magician Mervin for a spell that can defeat Koopa once and for all, and they are attacked by a group of Bezos from Super Mario Bros. 2 that start as black but then turn red after the transition. Great continuity! 
After they get saved by Mervyn literally puffing in under the cover of a smoke screen, they bamf off to Mervyn's cave and find out that King Koopa has already taken over and has basically declared himself king after the old king died. Then the Chosen One plot happens and it's revealed that there is a prophecy that whoever pulls the golden plunger from the bathtub at the center of town will save Kremola. So naturally Mario pulls the plunger the second he arrives only for Koopa to show up and steal it and use it to solidify himself on the throne and captures everyone save for Mervyn. He puts them in your average cliche dungeon death trap, Marvin poofs them out of it, and then they go to get the golden plunger snake from the lady in the lake. And naturally, now that Mario is holding it, he turns super and gets the coloration from his fire form from the games. They have a four minute long, poorly choreographed fight scene, Mario wins, and Koopa bamps off after giving your classic 80s next time speech. At the end of the day, if you can look past all the layering and coloring errors, you get a fun series that doesn't take itself seriously at all, and can be quite entertaining at times. It's a mixed bag for sure, but it's pretty fun if you can turn your brain off. Anywho, I'm the Wallace Clown, signing out. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and whatnot, and stay fresh, cheese bags. Oh!